I always start out talking about horror games in the same way. Because I love horror games. I think they are some of the greatest entertainment mediums of all time. They fully capture your imagination and your horror. Fully immersing you in their worlds. Now, that's of course only with good horror. Bad horror, as we've seen flooding the market, is awful. It's barely even memorable. And when it gets too crowded, it becomes a parody upon itself. We only need so many demonic animatronics running around before we get it. Suits are scary. But it's always refreshing when you talk about an indie game that hasn't quite lost its charm. And the last horror game I did on the channel was Man of Madon, the Dark Pictures anthology game that's out on a boat. It came out about two years ago. And now we're talking about Little Nightmares 2. If this this is my first horror game that's more of a game than it is a movie. I love horror, but I've only talked about three, including this one on the channel, because of the re of the need to perfect the game. It takes something that is tense and memorable and makes it boring and bland and a thing on the to-do list. The need that a lot of horror games have that features you to perfect their games is just awful, in my opinion. But Little Nightmares 2 doesn't suffer from any of those. And as excited as I am to talk about Little Nightmares 2, when it comes to doing Little Nightmares, you're going to have to Tune in to my Spotify podcast where I'm going back through from the very beginning, adding in a little bit more commentary, and also throwing in some 100% completion games as bonus extra content. Because unfortunately, for Tales to the Hunt, there's no spot for Little Nightmares. Little Nightmares has no platinum trophy, and as crushing as that is, it means I get to talk about Little Nightmares 2 in a bit of a weird vacuum. We're no longer on a boat that started off the first Little Nightmares. And this might even be a prequel? Sequel? The jury is still very much out. And depending on who you ask, argue about. Personally, I think it is a prequel. There are references to the boat and things, but... This is where you really see Six kind of become Six. She goes from being picked on and bullied to progressingly more and more to be more of her own protagonist. But we're not playing as her. We are playing as a different character. An unnamed boy who's just trying to get through. His story starts out in an empty forest with a TV. He's pushed out and like it is common to do in these platforming horror games, go right. I keep going. Now the game might be a side scrolling horror game, but it is a horror game. The atmospheres are tense and gloomy. The energy just seems oppressive. But it's not something that you look at and say, I'm sorry I'm here. Now, Little Nightmares 2 isn't terrifying. There weren't moments that made me jump out of my skin or even moments that haunt my dreams. But there were definitely moments where I was cursing out, fuck, 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 as I was running through trying to get away from the monsters. Little Nightmares 2 is easily a horror game that if you don't like horror, you could get into. It doesn't go out of its way to terrify you. It 
more unnerves you. There are a couple of set pieces and locations that are downright terrifying, but that's not the entirety of it. The game isn't meant to have you shitting yourself the entire time. It's meant to make you feel heavy and just creep you out just enough that it feels wrong to continue, even though you have no choice. The trophies in this game are pretty easy, to say the least. You have trophies that concerning each one of the big sections, collectible trophies, and a trophy, and a couple of trophies that ask you to do specific things with specific hats. Luckily, with New Game Plus, the and Chapter Select that keeps all your progress, none of the none of these games are missable. There's nothing that you'd have to start off from the very beginning again to do, which is great. I absolutely love it. Another little side story. I picked up the TV edition of Little Nightmares 2, meaning I I got it with its own the statue of Mono and Six. I got it with all the extra DLC things because I wanted to support this game. I played a little bit, like, five ten minutes of little nightmares back when i was working at gamestop and i loved it unfortunately with no platinum trophy i didn't have the avenue to talk about it on the channel since yes i'm doing a podcast and yes i'm gonna i'm I'm cooking up all the plans and schemes but it's always going to come down to the platinum trophy my ability to express myself on this channel will always be about the platinum trophy so if you want to hear stories about the park and going back through that, or stories about Little Nightmares, or stories about Never Alone, as I went back and did that game, including the DLC, try finding me on Spotify, Tales of the Hunt. Same story, but with some extra stuffs and extra little doodads. I'm excited to continue my work over there, but... That's for the Little Nightmares episode. We are talking about Little Nightmares 2. So let's talk. While all of the trophies in this game don't really give you a clear explanation of what is required of you to pop the trophies, it is not really a spoiler to... I'm going to tell you what the requirements are without spoiling the exacts of the game, which is what I always try to do here. So, let's continue. Fail prey. It's not murder of the bad people, is it? The first section of this game involves you running around in the forest, and this is enemy there. At the end of the level, you need to be wearing the collectible raccoon tail hat. It is found by entering in the house that you'll find eventually. And instead of going all the way right and up into the attic like you're supposed to, as soon as you can come forward, go to the left. It's one of the first places you can actually deviate from the set path. And it is worth it. You get a cool hat. But whether or not you wear the hat, you will get forged. Nature is a terrifying thing. By getting this trophy, you have gone through the entire forest and nature section of the game, and you won't be returning. But, it's okay. After all, you managed to get through part of the game. 26. Relax, she heard you. You have a button to call six over to your side to reunite. Mashing this button enough times until the trophy pops, and you'll get it. It is a bit of a mood killer, though, so I recommend either doing it after you finish the game to preserve the horror, or just do it like I did and mash away. You will need to do this trophy when both of your characters are together, even if they are a little bit separated, but not during a set piece where she's taking away from you. Monotones. My, what a curious song you play. 
this game, this trophy is going to see you climb up some apartment towers. And on one of the apartments, with the floor caved in and rope tying it up to essentially pull it up to a top floor, you're going to find a piano. While it has been ripped off the rope and it's smashed into the ground floor, not the ground, but like the floor, or the floorboards, just go ahead and run back and forth on those, on that piano. They put some time into developing it. Enjoy the fruits of their labor. And you get your trophy. True colors. You'll never know when you need protection from the elements. This is another one of those trophies that just end up happening through progression. Scored. Best days of our short, terrible lives. Yeah, this whole section's pretty dark. But not terrifying. Hunger. Plenty of snacks for a growing boy. What you need to do here is that when you first enter in the hospital, go ahead and jump up on the lover dispensing food. Keep doing it until you get yourself a trophy. A lot of the trophies in this game are just fun. They are just dorky and they let you experiment. Some of the best stuff for trophy hunters. It's letting you interact with the environment without really breaking your bones. Most of the time. Ex-best friends. I see through you. Again in the hospital. You are going to take... Mono and run all the way over to the x-ray machine. This x-ray machine has some hints and clues before things get truly terrifying. Activating the switch and taking Mono by the hand over to the x-ray machine, exposing both of your bony, bony skeletons, get to this trophy. And stay dead. Better safe than sorry. Later on in the game, still in the hospital, you'll end up getting these hand enemies. Once you've defeated a hand enemy, hit it again. Once or twice. You'll get a trophy. Popcorn. Movie night on the ward. or taken care of. This is actually one of the easier to miss trophies because of all the work it requires you to do in comparison. What you need to do is you need to get popcorn from the top level of the ward, bring it all the way down to the furnace. Chuck in the popcorn in there, and then it can go pop, pop, pop. We'll get you a trophy. Medicine ball. Any other last requests? There's going to come a pretty intense moment in the game. Easily one of the scariest parts throughout the entire game is the second half of this hospital scene. Once you're done getting chased, pick up a ball and throw it. It'll be pretty obvious where you need to throw it and you'll pick up a trophy. Again, another one of those fun little things that the developers put in to have you explore and experiment with their world. It's a good one. It's even kind of cute. In the palm of my hand, hold tight and we'll be just fine. This trophy requires you to hold hands with six. Hold on to her hand as long as you can, as much as you can. In this dark and mysterious world where friends get taken from you and TVs are dangerous, Holding on close to a friend, it can be pretty comforting. Letting you know that you're not alone in the universe. Hospitalized. Are you sure you don't want any further treatments? This trophy is for finishing off the hospital level. And it is your three quarters of the way through. Notice. Paled. Life in the big city is all over. This is for finishing the level, finishing off the city level. In comparison to the hospital level, it's quite short. 
and it is full of set pieces. Don't worry. It's okay. Signal interruption. It's all over now. This is for finishing the game. And a whopping 53.8% of players have earned this trophy. In my opinion, it's a crying shame. But now we're going into the cleanup trophies. And honestly, a lot of the trophies I got in this cleanup stage. Because I wanted to really enjoy playing through the game. How do I look? Perfect. It's so you. The in-game rewards for finishing the game is another hat. Put it on and you'll get a trophy. Evasive Prey. Welcome back to the beginning of the game. The forest level. Now for this trophy, it's pretty simple. You need to activate every single trap. But not get caught in any of them. The second you do, you have to restart the level. You're using the pine cones and throwing them onto all the bear traps is gonna be your best way of getting it done. Now you can run on the bear traps and have split second reactions to before they close, but it is a bit of a gamble, so I just recommend using the pine cones. What did you expect? What's in the box? What did you expect to see in there? Back in the forest up his level, when you go into the house, there's a little ice box right before the door that leads out of the kitchen. Open it up. Wild kids. Nothing of us remains in the wilderness. This is going to be your collectibles. By going through and picking up all of these not even picking up, walking through and to all these shadowy children figures. In the game, you're going to get a number of collectible trophies. These are pretty hard to see, so I do recommend using a guide in order to find them. There are all five of these trophies. Referee. Unorthodox, but they all count. This is for this is a trophy for wearing the soccer hat. You can find it in the garbage can outside of the school. And then before running into the school, wearing the hat, run into the goal. You'll get a trophy. Again, this fun kind of nonsense that this game lets you get away with. Fly free. Rebellion at its finest. This trophy requires you to run into the dorms with the bunk beds, grab the paper airplane. Then you're going to run back out to the window and throw it out of the window. Get yourself a trophy. Bully of bullies. Creative, efficient, brutal. Top of the class. Now, this is going to require you to die. Getting Bully of Bullies, you're going to be chased by three of the gremlin pot-headed children. What you need to do is you need to find a spot with a big bookcase. Climbing up that big bookcase, it's going to fall. By letting yourself die and three of your bullies, you'll be able to get the trophy. A little bit of self-sacrifice. Merciful feet. Tempting. So tempting. You'll get this trophy by leaving the least child alone. After all, it wouldn't be his fault. Half hats. It would be cliche to collect them all. You're going to get this trophy for picking up half of the hats collection. Again, a guide is going to be your best bet. School kids. This guy. A guide is your best bet. Toys are for kids. There. You'll be much warmer now. What you gonna need what you need to do here is that in the furnace where we popped off some popcorn, go ahead and grab all the toys you can and throw them into the furnace. Each of them. 
There's about four, so it is going to take some time. Objection. Some holes are more picky than others. What you need to do here is that you need to find a tiny hole in the back of one of the long corridors in the hospital, not the ward. Once you get down there, you'll fall through. This is actually a pretty easy trophy, even though I'm giving a poor description, because it is a trophy you need for the sick kids. Nothing of us remains in the hospital. This trophy is for collecting all of these shadow children in the hospital level, and objection has the last remaining kid in the level. Using a guide, you'll be able to find it pretty easily. First, do no harm. It's crueler to let him live. At the end of the hospital level, you're given a choice. And it's not really even a choice, it's more of an option. You can set a man on, on fire. He's been tormenting you, so I don't really blame you. And hell, when I did it the first time, I definitely set the man on fire. It felt like a good ending for the horrors and terror he created. But then you have this trophy, which gives it might be crueler to let him live. Let him suffer. Who knows? Pale kids, none of us remains in the city. No more remains. None of us remain anywhere. Bravo. Again, more of the shadow children, more guides. Unladylike. Hello? Have we met before? This is actually for getting in the same spot that you'll get the last shadow kid in the pale city. It is by looking at a picture and being in the same room as a picture of the tall lady from Little Nightmares 1. She's terrifying and now you're in the apartment. Post-industrial. You punctuated someone's day. Maybe they'll notice. I, in Within the apartment of the Pale City, next to an elevator, you'll find a parasol at the bottom of the garbage chute. Drag that parasol up the elevator, go up the elevator, take it off the elevator at the first landing. Then drag that parasol all the way over to the left-hand side of your screen. Do all of this while wearing a postmaster's hat, and you'll get another trophy. Again, pretty tricky, but not that difficult. Far ahead. Hats are very important to some people. This is for collecting all of, all of the hats within the game, and it is my last trophy. At the end, the Platinum Trophy is called Prime Time Content Consumer. It's a very rare, sitting at 7.4%. Your, your life is now free of challenges. Congratulations. Thank you all for listening. My name is Mitten St. Raven. And next week, we are going to continue our little tour of indie games. It's been a while, and I'm so happy to be back. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye-bye.